and welcome to WashingCon. Uh, this is Dragon's Demise, and we're here with Elizabeth Hargrave, um, world famous designer, wingspan, which kind of goes without saying. Um, so, how are you enjoying WashingCon? Uh, I love it. I came to the very first WashingCon. I've been coming for years. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is our Good. fifth WashingCon. So, this is your fifth WashingCon. I might have missed one somewhere in there, but yeah, close at least. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, we are going to have our famous Jenga interview. Um, you haven't done a Jenga interview with us before. I've never done a Jenga interview with anyone. That's exciting. <laughs> so, just to recap, for those of you who have maybe not watched our previous Jenga interviews, um, all of the red tiles will be questions about the board game industry. The blue tiles will be questions about your games. And green will be completely random out of the blue questions. We have a few we like to ask. Um, those of you who've watched before may be waiting. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and let you start and pull the first tile. All right. Oh, yeah. oh, it's just asking for it. Yeah, that's how my dad plays. Always. I, yeah. All right, so well, questions is, about yeah. your games. Um, I'd like to start with asking about your Tusty Musty game because yeah. that's coming out next. It um, is. You had kickstarted that, kickstarted that, I believe? Yes. I originally designed it for a contest that Jen, the button shy did during Jen Cant last summer. Right. Um, and it won, it co won that contest along with Seasons of Rice by Corey Davey. Um, so then Button Shy has, did two separate Kickstarters for the games. Um, so it's on Kickstarter this spring. It is being printed and assembled right now. I think it's supposed to ship at the very beginning of October, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, so you can go ahead and pre order it from Button Shy now or you know, into the future, it'll be available on the Button Shy website. So it's an 18 card game uh, that was inspired by Victorian flower language, which was a fad where people published whole dictionaries about the meanings that they assigned to different flowers and what it meant when you gave someone a certain flower. Um, so there's flavor text on each card saying, you know, the, when you give someone the camellia, it means you are a flame in my heart. <laughs> but um, it has no effect. But it, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, but when you're giving people flowers, you offer them one face up and one face down, and they have to choose which one they want. And they each have different scoring conditions. So they're sort of deciding, do they want the, the sure thing or the hidden right. um, thing? And, and a lot of the game is sort of the psychology of, of which one, are you offering me face up the thing that you think that I want? Or are you right. hiding something that might be better? Um, that kind of thing. So that's tussy awesome. messy. And it plays in about how long? Uh, it's super quick, yeah. You play three rounds, probably in half an hour. Awesome. So it's a good throw it in your purse kind of game with yep. beautiful art. Beautiful art. Art by Beth Sobel. Awesome. Which makes me super happy. Yeah. She's All right. So my turn. <laughs> uh, I like the middle ones. Yeah. All right. So red, um, I have to ask because we were talking about this last night. Um, what was the ceremony like um, for winning the Kennerspiel? What was that experience like for you? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the overarching thing that there's a con in Berlin for the weekend before the Spiel des Arts ceremony which is technically unrelated, but I'm sure it's no coincidence that it's sure. that weekend. And then that Sunday night when the con has wrapped up, there's a dinner for all of the nominees and all of the jurors for the Spiel and Kennerspiel, um, who are mostly like German board game media people. Um, and then, so that was wild because that was my first time meeting all the other nominees who were like some of my favorite game designers. So that was awesome. And then um, there, so there was a little bit of preparation during the dinner. The MC kind of went around and warned us what question he was going to ask us on stage the next day. Well, that's and nice. Then we, yeah, very nice. <laughs> and then um, there's a dress rehearsal, dress rehearsal, I don't know. There's a rehearsal Monday morning. Um, 
and then for like an hour and and then the actual thing starts and it's in this like fancy modernish rock and roll themed hotel with all these like neon lights and guitars that, that you German. can check out and take to your room <laughs> um, but it's like it's in a big hotel ballroom with lots of chairs in rows there's like a whole audience that's mostly media people i guess and then lots of photographers so they call each um, nominee up on stage and do a little thing about the game um, and for everyone there it was just like all these flash photographers going off in your face like you see with like paparazzi, paparazzi. <laughs> which they wa also warned us about which is nice because it's just like an experience i had never had before um so yeah they, they call each person up and then they have like this giant if you can picture the the player pond that is the spiel de jarre's logo right they have a really big one of those like this big on wheels with a sheet over it and they like wheel it out on stage and pull off the sheet and reveal who the winner the winner was that's crazy it's what they make a big production of it and there's a drum roll beforehand too wow and they so make, you didn't yeah. know until the no, moment no. they pulled off the... apparently only two people know like the people that count the votes and then they don't tell anyone else and then whoever carves it onto the Right, they like print out, they must print out the cover of every game or something. I don't, like the cover of Wingspan was up on the oh, thing and okay. then they revealed it. Wow. Uh, yeah. That sounds crazy. It is, it is intense. It yeah. was, I was very glad that I decided to actually go and yeah. do it in person. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right, tis your that's turn. That's my turn. Is it the middle? Oh, but those are nice and stuck. See, I'm like your dad. I always do the tap. I do it too. That's fine. Nice. I guess that's like the standard Jenga procedure. All right, more red questions. Um, so just before the interview, we were talking about how all of the artists for your games are women. So far, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty exciting. What has that awesome. um, experience been like to? ensure that happens is that important to you and i love it it was not my responsibility to find the artist but and shy asked me who my ideal artist would be for tussie messy and i suggested beth thinking she wouldn't have time because i know she's doing some stuff right now but she, i guess she made time for 18 cards which is <laughs> awesome and, yeah um, it's it's so in her wheelhouse and it just it turned out so beautifully um with Wingspan, I, feel, I may have also mentioned Beth to Jamie because I just I love her stuff. And so she did the player maths, but did not have time for the 170 bird cards. <laughs> sure. Um, and then I just learned at Gen Con the story behind how Stonemeyer found the women who did the bird art, which is that um, Natalia Rojas's daughter goes to school with Alan Stone's kids. So I think it was literally like a playground conversation. Wow. Oh, what do you do? I'm an artist. Oh, would you like to draw <laughs> some birds for us? That's amazing. It's amazing. And they just knocked it out of the park. And I think for both of them, it was kind of a life-changing commission, like to, to get hired to do that many illustrations sort of all in a set is just, um, I could see like how much more detailed and refined things got over the course of the 170 sure. birds because it's what an opportunity to practice your craft like that yeah absolutely and to do so many in such a short period of time they really just they worked their butts off yeah. doing all the art in the That's time awesome. frame that they wanted it and, and, and it really said, paid off and yeah. it's such a part of the success of the game i think that the art is so beautiful i mean Good mechanics and beautiful art make for an amazing game. Right. So, yeah, I would tend to agree with that for sure. Yeah. All right. No. Oh. Off to the side. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, you know. When we first started doing these, I was pretty hesitant with the Jenga Tower. I've gotten a little bit braver, particularly since we had someone, like, twist the tower on <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, it didn't fall over. It's fine. Um, so we've got this coming out. 
Um, and I know you have a few games on the horizon. You were yes. play testing something earlier. Um, so yeah. what's next? So next I have a game with AEG that'll probably come out next year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how much they're talking about one. Sure. <laughs> Such a bad fan. Um, <laughs> and you then, said it was also a female artist for that game. Also a female artist. Yeah. That I'm sure they have not announced what, uh, what the art will look like. But, um, but yeah, I'm super excited about that. And I think it'll look really different from a lot of other board games, which will be cool. Um, and then just at Gen Con, I signed a game with Pandasaurus. Cool. So the game you saw is playtesting. John Gilmore is here at Washington. He is the head of development now for um, Pandasaurus. He did Dead of Winter and lots yeah. of other games. Yeah. Um, but now is a Pandasaurus employee. Um, I think we may have interviewed him at some point. Yeah. Um, so we were playing a game that he last played at Unpub in Baltimore in the spring. Oh, wow. Um, and he, he had sort of shown some interest in it. I was like, this is not ready for you guys to even think about. Um, so then I, I went and played it with the, um, the Nathan and Molly who run Pandasaurus okay. at Gen Con. Um, and had a great time with them. And so now John and I were catching up and sort of talking about, okay, where is this going to go and develop? Yeah. So that's on a longer time frame. That might be into 20, well, maybe maybe next year, maybe the year after. We'll see. Sure. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. And then I'm working on Wingspan Expansions, too. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. you mentioned one of those is coming soon. Should be this fall, I think. Um, if you subscribe to the Stonemeyer newsletter, you have seen um, Jamie does this little chart that has little dots filled in by color of like where everything is in its process. And uh, the first expansion should be out this fall. I think he'll start talking about it in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, that's, that's exciting. Super exciting. That's Robert. one that I wrapped up a while back, and now I'm working on the second expansion while we're yes. There's a long lag time after you finish working on something as sure. a designer until it's actually available to the public. So we've all like got something to talk about of like what's next because right. because of that lag time. Yeah. yeah. Well, it takes time to draw 170 right. birds. I, I mean, I don't know how many birds are in the expansion, but I would assume yeah. there are more birds from some there are other some birds. Yes. Yeah. We said we're gonna do one for each continent, so this will be the birds of another continent. Nice. Will be part of the expansion. Yes. Um, I mentioned last night that my husband was very confused why all the birds in the first set were in North America. He but there's a world map. But there's a world map. That's the part of the bottom why... game, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a world map, and why are all the birds from North America? And then was very excited to find right. out that there would be birds from uh, the rest of the world right. as expansions. So that's pretty and, awesome. Right. That map was actually sort of a late game change. In my, for most of the life of Wingspan, the map was like a map of the U.S. Right. And where they lived. And then I was like, oh, if we're doing North America, it should really have Canada. And then, oh, if we're going to do expansions, like if we want to be ready to do expansions from other places, then really the map should just be a world map. Right. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely the right decision. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it's... I think it's my journey. It's year ago. I'm talking. That's Let's fine. <laughs> I know. Here we go. Got it. I was going to go for green next, too. We had, <laughs> Mix um, it up. Yeah, so my favorite green question is, what are your hobbies outside of board games? I have a lot. A Do you? lot of hobbies, yes. Oh, I, I like to say my hobby later. is hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> um... The next one that I spend them, I mean, in general, I'm a very outdoorsy person. Sure. I am a birder. Sure. Like I go birding. Fall migration's about to heat up, so like, nice. that'll start being like multiple mornings a week. I'll go out and, and go awesome. birding with my husband. Um, I am a mushroomer. Okay. I am actually the treasurer of the Mycological Association of Washington. Um, I didn't so know that existed. I like to forage for mushrooms, and, um, especially edibles, but uh, there's just lots of beautiful random mushrooms growing in the woods. 
This is also peak time for that. So like in a couple weeks, I'll be going camping with the mushroom. We call it mushroom camp. The club does not call it mushroom camp, but my husband and I do. What sure. are you doing this weekend? I'm going to mushroom camp. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, just like going out into um, a couple spots that we have been going to for years and like going camping with the club and, and yeah. looking for mushrooms all weekend. And, and then like arraying them out on tables and there are people in the club that can identify almost everything. And, wow. It's just so fun to see the diversity of what's out there. And That's awesome. Often we'll find a, a good score of something edible and people will cook it up. And it's a lot of fun. Um, what else? Those are probably the, the two biggest. We have a big garden. Okay. A gardener. Yeah. 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 And do a lot of traveling. Travel's awesome. Yeah. So, all right. Let's see. Like, oh, good. Red. And this is a perilous tower. It just moved a little bit. Um, I've heard you can twist the whole thing. You can. <laughs> um, I may have to practice with the Jenga tower. Um, I had a question and I just forgot it. Industry? Yes, Amen. game industry. So you have a game with Stonemeyer and you're talking about Pandasaurus and AG and this is a uh, button shy. So um, is there any particular reason you decided to diversify and not like it wasn't super intentional. Sure. I would love to work with Stonemeyer again, so it certainly wasn't a like, yeah. oh I never again. Right, kind of thing. right. Uh, I mean, Button Shy and AEG were both specific um, calls that they put out. So Button Shy was for the Gen Kent contest. AEG actually did a call for women designers last fall. Oh, okay. Where um, it wasn't quite a contest, uh, but they said we would like our 2020 lineup to have women designers in it. Pretty sure. much for the first time, I think, for AUG. Yeah. Um, so I loved that idea. I wanted to support that idea. I think they got a lot of submissions. That's good. Um, which is exciting to hear. I think they, I think I remember hearing that they may have picked up one other game that came out of that as well. Um, and they, they picked up one of mine. So that was a, just like wanting to support and participate in that uh -huh. endeavor. And then Pandasaurus was really John Gilmore grabbing me at Unpub and being like, I want this game. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I would, and I think it would be fun to work with him and, and sort of collaborate on the development for that game. So, yeah. it's, I, it's been really interesting to see how different publishers do things, and I think that's going to be valuable for me as a designer to get that perspective yeah. of working with a lot of different people. So. I'm happy it's worked out that way, but it wasn't super intentional. Sure. That's cool though, because you can learn different people's styles and then apply something that worked well over here to something right, else. Right, right. Yeah. Or even like looking at the Pandasaurus contract that they sent me, like being able to look back at the other three that I had already seen and been like, oh, two of them had this little thing in there that's kind of nice, like can we sure. work that? And they were like, oh yeah, that is good. That should totally be in our contract, you know? That's awesome. So like, cool. Yeah. So you're go. I feel like we're getting close to the time in Jenga where it actually matters. It's what true. you're taking out. <laughs> See, they're one. always red. I mean, I mean, the center ones are so easy to go for. It's true. And I think a lot of the reds are in the middle. Someone's taking our picture right now, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know that... You know, there's been a lot of talk about, oh, female game designers and female game designers. And, you know, we, of course, want to promote female game designers. Um, what has that experience been like for you? Um, you know, and you said that you really liked that AEG put out the right. ad. And, and I think that it's a good time. There's a lot of momentum. But yes. it has got to be overwhelming. I mean, to me, I've seen a lot of changed just in like the in the time that I've been working at Wingspan which was like five years from okay. when I first started playtesting um, 
because when I first started playtesting five years ago, it was extremely common that I would go to playtesting events and be the only woman. It is sure. still not uncommon, but it is much less common now that right. I'm the only woman at an event. Sure. But it sucks to w walk into a room full of guys and be the only woman. Yeah, like it, just it does. It's not pleasant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's headed in the right direction. And because of that and because I, I want so badly for there to be more women in the room, like I enjoy the attention that I get about being a, a female game designer and I've been trying to bring more attention to like how crazy it is that things are skewed because I think a lot of people assume that uh, women are less interested in games, less interested in designing games, and I don't think that's true. I think there are some structural things, including like how much it sucks to walk into a room of just guys mm -hmm. that have kept women from designing games or even from becoming hardcore enough gamers that they think yeah. of designing a game. Um, and so and I think the more we talk about that and the more I get attention for, for being a female game designer, I think it just helps normalize it, helps people think about it because if it's not something that you've really paid attention to right. or like heard that it makes people uncomfortable that the industry is so skewed. Like, I, I just, th I think it's helpful to keep talking about it, keep bringing attention to it. And I have seen noticeable change in five years and I think we will continue to see That's awesome. noticeable change. So. I've seen that too, but on a much obviously yeah. smaller scale. But yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, Washington, the room looks great, right? Like, right. It's, it's almost 50-50, I think, which is yeah. would have been unusual, I think, even five years ago. Yeah, I, I, for gamers. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I definitely saw a large number of people that you wouldn't have seen on the street and go, that person plays board games, yeah. you know? And, and playing games and being excited, and, and a lot of them wanted to play Wingspan. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's something I've heard from a lot of people is like, you know, I got a lot of emails from guys who are like, oh my god, my girlfriend never wants to play games, but she'll play Wingspan with me. <laughs> Which is like both endearing and like, how hard have you been, really been trying to find a game that your girlfriend wants to play? Because Wingspan can't be the only one. <laughs> and like, have you been trying to make her play Scythe all the time or something? I don't know. <laughs> but, but it's great. And it's, and it's, brought a bunch of birders into the hobby. Yeah. Like I met a bunch of people at Gen Con who said, we never played a modern board game before Wingspan. We heard about Wingspan through the birding press. And then by, yeah. by August, they were at Gen Con. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Well, that's awesome. I am yeah. excited to hear that you're willing to keep taking that attention. Um, yeah. Because it, it, you know, it takes that leadership to take the attention in order to help you forward. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, and I know some women like just don't feel like talking about it because they like they get sick of talking about it, but yeah. I'm just like, no, we got we gotta talk about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to keep doing it. Alright, is it my turn or yours? I think I did that once. Alright. We gotta put more green ones in the Have middle. Have you ever completely knocked over the tower before the interview was over? Uh, or is, by definition, is the Jacob is over telling me once. <laughs> All right. So Greg isn't here, um, but I would be neglectful if I didn't ask his favorite question. Oh, what is your favorite donut? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't eat a ton of donuts. I actually really enjoy cake donuts. Sure. Apparently when he was in high school, my dad worked in a bakery that made donuts. Okay. And he loves cake donuts. Yeah. And so I think I like, I, he introduced me to cake donuts and that's what like my yeah. natural taste is because that's I ate awesome. them as a kid. I like plenty of other ones too, but that's like my, yeah. my home. There's a, uh, if you're ever in, Alexandria. I know you live on the other side of the Beltway, but yes. if you're ever in Alexandria, Sugar Shack has really good cake donuts. Yeah, yeah. They have like uh, blueberry and red velvet oh, yeah. cake donuts. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's your go. I see ya. Oh, look at that. More red questions. I know. <laughs> it always oh, it's happens. Getting lovely. Um, all right, so I'm gonna kind of, I like to go, when I have too many red questions, I just kind of go purple. 
So we'll mix game industry with some of your games. Um, is there any particular game mechanic that uh, mm. attracts your attention more than others, or a game mechanic that you would like to use in a future game that you haven't used yet? That was a good question. Um, the tower does make us get creative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, my go-to is engine building, which I mean, wingspan is all that, and it, that's a mechanic that I love, and will I'm sure come back to over and over again. Or and you know, working in with other mechanics, like I love when a game really builds. Sure. Over the course of the game, um, I would love to do a bag builder. Okay. The game I, I signed with AEG started as a bag builder, but did not stay a bag builder. Okay. <laughs> so I may go back to that. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, it's so vast. And then, like, the Holy Grail is coming up with something that doesn't exist yet, right? But of course. <laughs> right. I mean, bag I building, I feel like, like it's kind of new. We recently did yeah. a Game Mechanics We Love and Game Mechanics We Hate podcast. Mm. And bag building was Hunter's favorite. Interesting. Yeah. He's very tactile. He likes playing mm. pieces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I am mostly theme first and then sort of trying yeah. to figure out the mechanic that fits with the story that I want to tell. Tulsi Mussy was kind of a combo of like, I had recently listened to two podcasts where Jamie Stegmeyer and someone else, I think Jeff Engelstein, had both said, oh, I Split You Choose is a really underused mechanic that people like, there should be more I Split You Choose games. Sure. And then I went looking for the theme that fit with that. But, uh, yeah, well, so. All right. Ugh. Nope. We have uh, really, oh, here's one. Blue. Um, so you just brought up theme. Um, and theme, of course, actually, I think to everyone on the podcast is like number one. But yeah. I've also noticed all of your games center around kind of a quasi-science theme. Is that... Quasi. Is that intentional? Science or nature, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that intentional or... Um, I think it's just the stuff that interests me. Sure. Um, I didn't set out to do it, but like uh, the things that I... It's just like something gets in my head that won't go away of like, oh, there should be a game that's about this and this is how it could happen. And like, I start waking up at four in the morning, can't fall back asleep because I'm thinking about how this game is gonna work. And then I, you know. Right. I, it's, it's so, in that sense, it's not even that conscious of a choice. It's just like, right. I gotta work on this thing. Um, and those are the, the subjects that have really gripped me. I will say when the other game that I took to Unpub this year was um, uh, about stunt people. No. Stunt people? Yes. That's not nature. That's not nature. <laughs> sure. One of the, I, I had a colleague, when I worked on the Hill, there was a speechwriter in our office who, um, who liked to read the obituary page for good stories. And she got me started doing that. And I, so I read an obituary of a stunt woman in the Washington Post. And like, There's no games about stunt people. How can that be? Kind of amazing. So that may be the next thing that I, I go back to and, and start working on. I haven't touched it since long. I we'll thought see, maybe it would be mushrooms. Mushroom game? Yeah, there's a mushroom game on my shelf that I haven't gotten back to, too. We'll see. All right. I think we're on our last question. Oh, is it to me? Yes. Huh. So you can knock over the tower if you want. <laughs> right, I could just do something with I could twist it, like it's twisting. <laughs> I'm gonna do it for red. Does this come out? Yeah. Go for it. Aggressive. If it falls over, then it falls over. There we go. I think you can be more aggressive Perfect. than you realize. It's yeah. true. We actually had someone go like this, and the whole what? tower just shifted down. And we all were like, oh my god. It stayed. Really? Yeah. It was intense. Um, so we talked earlier, you like to travel. Yes. What is the best trip you've taken and uh, oh. where would you go? 
Um, I have done a lot of travel in Central America. Well, probably, so if you get to count it as one trip, I quit my job when I got married and we traveled for six months. That's amazing. So my honeymoon was my best trip. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you go for six months? Six months. We drove across the U.S., um, sort of did a bunch of stuff in sort of Utah, like did a week-long canoe trip through Canyonlands and went to Arches and all that stuff. Wow. Visited a bunch of folks on the, you know, sure. on the way west, um, down the California coast. Wow. Back out to Texas. Flew from Austin, where I went to graduate school and have friends. Flew from Austin to Police City. Okay. And then went overland back to Austin through Belize, Guatemala, Mexico. Wow. And then to New Orleans, where I know people, to Florida, where I grew up, and then back up the East Coast. That's amazing. It was pretty amazing. We did uh, like a month of language school and like family stay in Guatemala. Oh, wow. Learned a lot of Spanish. Went to Tikal, which we have been back to twice since. Um, so as a, like, as a single place, I might say Tikal is my favorite place to visit. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I have, I have, I mean, I've been to Costa Rica, but I haven't been a lot of places yeah. in, in, in the South. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you for taking out some time to spend Absolutely. with us. My it pleasure. is your duty to knock over the tower. Well, after you said that about pulling the pieces out, like, <laughs> see, I'm going to see what happens when you do that, and it's probably just going to fall over. That's okay. <laughs> But it started to just it did. do the... It did. <laughs> I want to say he, he pulled it out like three times before it actually fell wow. over. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember who it was? Yeah, it was Eric Royce. Uh, yeah. And he's working on a dexterity-based game, so maybe oh, he's practiced. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you didn't come to Washington this year, we hope to see you next year. Uh, it's been great, and talk to you soon. Bye.